Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Welcome back to the city of York, everybody. It seems ages since I've been here, but that's what being ill does to you. It messes up your schedule. But this week, the city of York will come to its conclusion. There are three episodes to go, and this is the first of the three. And don't be fooled by this dull and grey overcast weather. The hat's on and the sunglasses are in my pocket because apparently today it's going to be one of the hotter, hottest days of the year. Well, it should be a, a good day then to walk around a big one. Welcome to Haxby. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome back to York everyone. It's been a long time, but finally the last three episodes in this series are coming at you. This is the town of Haxby, located to the north of York and bounded by the parish of Wigginton to the west, with which it shares a continuous urban area. Its name is of Old Norse origin and derives from Hacker's Settlement. It was recorded as Haxby in the Doomsday Book. Haxby is the dictionary definition of modern suburbia. Stretching all the way to the York Outer Ring Road, Haxby has grown massively in the last century and now sports a population well in excess of 8,000 people. Haxby's history is believed to go back to the 9th century when the Vikings invaded this part of Yorkshire. This theory is backed up by a Viking cross base in the churchyard. There's evidence of Roman occupation too, with the 1966 discovery of a Roman villa on Haxby Moor being the biggest clue. Much of its current centre is 18th and early 19th century architecturally, but significant redevelopment took place in Victorian times. It was at that time, with the arrival of the railway, that the village became a popular place to live and commute from. Now four times the size of the place it was back then, Haxby was awarded town status in 1992. Its town centre, or old core if you will, is still known as the village, and it's been a conservation area since 1976. Right, hiking boots on, let's go for a walk. Our route begins on Landing Lane alongside the River Foz. I don't wish to alarm anyone, but here this has a history of flooding. In the 16th century, flooding from the Foz was so bad that Haxby's inhabitants were flooded more often than they weren't. The name Landing Lane suggests there was a landing on the river at this point, but if it did exist, it's never been documented. This is the Lock House. Dating back to 1795, this was built by the Foz Navigation Company to make it navigable and improve river trade. Just after that is a well-defined footpath off Landing Lane, popular with local dog walkers. This will take us over a railway line. This is the York to Scarborough Line. Haxby once had a station on this line which sees nowhere near the amount of trains it once used to. However, that railway line was the catalyst for Haxby's incredible growth since Victorian times, and it's still going today. 
A growth explosion in the 1970s quadrupled the population of Victorian Haxby, so expect to see a lot of housing estates here. It does have facilities though, like the Ethel Ward Memorial Playing Field, complete with football pitches and a playground. And of course football is played on these playing fields. You can see behind me there's a sign which gives you a clue as to which football team actually do use these. Haxby Town Football Club and Haxby Town Junior Football Club as well. And it's interesting to note by the way that Haxby is a town. It's not a, a normal civil parish, it's a civil parish with town status. And trust me, by the time we finish this episode you'll see why it's got town status. This is a big place. The Ethel Ward Memorial playing fields have an interesting backstory. The land they're built on was the former pleasure grounds of the now demolished Haxby Hall. Haxby Hall was built in 1790, spanned some 22 acres of land and was Grade 2 listed. During World War II the hall was used to billet evacuees from Hull. Its last owner, Kenneth Ward, donated its pleasure grounds to the village to build the playing fields, on the proviso that they were to forever commemorate his late wife, Ethel, who died in 1944. The new playing fields were officially opened by former Yorkshire and England cricketer Morris Leyland in 1948. Leyland then went on to bowl the opening over of the inaugural cricket match on the ground, which was a draw between New Earswick and Haxby and Wigginson cricket clubs. The hall itself was demolished in 1960, and a little further around our route, I'll show you where it once stood and what's in its place now. Leaving the playing fields behind, we're now making our way past this block of tennis courts towards York Road. A long straight affair running north to south, York Road links Haxby's town centre to the A1237, the York Outer Ring Road. You can catch a bus here. The primary service in Haxby is the number one, which links many of York's northern settlements together. The bus service is the only way at present to get into York via public transport. That may soon change though, stick with me. Next I was met with some interesting local residents, these cute little flowerpot men, and yes they were named Bill and Ben. Now we've turned right onto Holly Tree Lane and in front of us is a large modern Roman Catholic church built in 1995. It was designed by John Black of Huddersfield and was the first church in York to be dedicated to the martyr St Margaret Clitheroe. Now we're entering the heart of the suburban sprawl to the south of the town centre. This is a school zone. The school in question is Headlands. This is the biggest of the two primary schools in Haxby and can cater for over 450 children. And where do they all live? Well, here of course. The next 20 minutes saw me wading through many residential streets. Most of Haxby was built from the 1970s onwards. It's a sea of massive housing estates and blocks of flats like Oak Tree Court. So make no mistake about it, this southern portion of Haxby is massive. It has quite a lot of residential streets and housing estates and it goes on for what seems like an eternity. If you look at the map you just wonder where the end is basically. It blends seamlessly into Wigginton which of course we've already covered so all of this might look a little bit familiar to you because it's the kind of thing we did see in that Wigginton episode. We're now going to take a, a right turn across a park and head towards Haxby Town Centre but it's still quite a walk away. I wonder what we're going to find on the way. There are some sporadic amenities in these estates. For example, on Oak Tree Lane, there's a Morrison's Daily and two hairdressers. There are parks too, but none anywhere near as big as the Ethel Ward. This one is called Mancroft Open Space. It's totally surrounded by housing on all sides. It features a big play area and a good place to exercise your dog. Once through the park, we emerge onto Hunters Close. In this area, we're close to the parish boundary with Wigginton. 
Even though the two merge together seamlessly, it's still important to know where the boundary is. The answer is here. It follows Golan Dyke, a small stream which runs around the back of the houses on Wheatfield Lane before turning northward. It does so at Barley View, where you'll find one of Haxby's many street lawns. You can't park or drive on these. At the end of the road is Jubilee Court. Operated by Yorkshire Housing, this is a retirement complex which was built in 1977. A left turn takes us onto Greenshaw Drive, and again it's more of the same. Is anyone bored of all this housing yet? Okay, so all this 20th century suburban housing is about to disappear as we head now into Haxby Town Centre. All of this modern housing will seem a little bit of a, a world away from what we're about to, to witness. And I haven't spent long in this part of Haxby, to be honest, because really it gets a bit samey, doesn't it? You know, once you've walked up one street, you've basically seen them all. Well, this bit has got a lot more character to it. Let's go and check it out. This is South Lane, and now we're approaching the old village core, better known as Haxby Town Centre. This is the rear of Haxby Shopping Centre, one of two along Haxby's main street. This one has several small retail units. Amongst others, these include a charity shop, a bookmaker's, a vet's, a coffee shop, a bakery and a wine bar. We'll catch the front of it again in a moment. Moving down South Lane, we're heading back to York Road once again. It's there we find Haxby Ambulance Station. This is one of the things that stands on land formerly occupied by Haxby Hall. Until recently, another thing was Haxby Hall Care Home. Now it's time for a walk through the town centre. Despite being a town, this street is still referred to as the village. The town centre has been a conservation area since 1976. The conservation area designation predates Haxby's town status. By some margin, it wasn't awarded that until 1992. Here's the second shopping centre, Rydale Court. This contains the famous Haxby Bakehouse, established in 2008. There's a supermarket in this area as well, a branch of the co-op. This can be found dead opposite Haxby's best known building. So obviously there's not much activity at the moment because it's still not quite eight o'clock in the morning. I've done this one early so that <laughs> I avoid the worst of the sun later. But trust me, this place can get quite busy. When I did the Wigginton episode, I drove along this road to get to Wigginton and the place was heaving, let me tell you. Right, let's head across the road because the next thing to talk about is that building right there, the Memorial Hall. Before we go any further, let's mark Haxby off the York list. With this one complete, the city has just got two to go. The Memorial Hall is an iconic landmark. Sporting a clock, this was formerly a board school and it was built in 1876. The clock commemorates the coronation of Edward VII in 1902. The school closed in 1954 and was bought by the parish council. The hall is available for hire for individuals and groups and also houses Vale Radio, a local community station. Beyond the hall, there's rows of shops on both sides of the road. In shot now is Thora and the Prince, a small gift and homeware shop. A bit further is Bromwich Family Butchers. This opened in 2022 after owner Harry Bromwich took over the former Haxby Butchers shop. A lot of small businesses in Haxby are promoted by the Haxby and Wigginton Traders Association. They're linked below. It's not all businesses in the town centre. There may be plenty and it may be thriving, but it's also partly residential as well. Here we have the Tiger Inn. Comfortable and welcoming, this is another fine example of a Samuel Smith's pub. Despite all these old buildings, believe it or not, there are only four listed structures in Haxby, and the church isn't one of them. 
Now in the middle of this main street, the village, amongst all the shops, you'll find Haxby's Church. And you'd have thought a place this big would have a bigger church, but no, it's quite a modest affair, as you can see here. It's very similar to the one we saw in neighbouring Wigington. So let's see what we can uh, discover about this one, the Parish Church of St Mary. St Mary's Church probably isn't all that big, owing to the fact that Haxby was once a chapelry in the parish of Strensel. This church was rebuilt in 1878 and is an aisleless building consisting of a nave and a chancel in a 13th century style. The nave was enlarged by the addition of three bays in 1911. St Mary's contains several monuments to the Hodgson family. Immediately south of the church is the base of a Viking cross, concrete evidence that Haxby was once a Viking settlement. The building next door used to be a branch of Barclays Bank. Now closed, the building is currently to let with Walker Singleton. Now we're at the front of Haxby Shopping Centre. You can tell just by looking at its frontage that this was built in the 1960s. Here's an aerial photograph of the area in the 1950s. The modern Sainsbury supermarket is now right in the centre of those buildings. Even though it's a town, it does still retain that village-like feel, doesn't it? It's almost like a modern Victorian village. Mind you, businesses like Stevenson's estate agent still offer clues that you are definitely in a town, albeit a comparatively small one. Now to go with the church and all the various shopping centres, there's also a pub called the Red Lion. There it is right there. The Red Lion, I think I've told you this before in a previous episode, is the most common pub name in Britain. Next we have Paddy Fields on the right here. This is a well-renowned Chinese restaurant which was established in 2007. A few doors up is Wortley House. This is a family dental surgery which can cater for both NHS and private patients. On the other side of the road is Haxby's Chippy. Named Miller's, this used to be a Wesleyan Methodist chapel. This plaque on the wall confirms that fact and even tells us the date. It was a chapel between 1813 and 1879. After the chippy, the village green appears on the left. Despite Haxby's modern urban sprawl, this is one area that still feels rural. You might recognise where we are now, as the primitive chapel I featured in the Wigginton video can be seen on this bend. Staying in Haxby, we're off up North Lane next, the street which complements South Lane on the other side of the town centre. Like its southern counterpart, it's a tight, narrow street with no footpaths that wouldn't look out of place in the East Riding. Here's the back of the Red Lion. Like the Tiger Inn, this also bills itself as friendly and welcoming, and it's well worth a visit. The next building of note stands right behind St Mary's Church. This is the church hall, fully equipped with kitchen facilities. Like the Memorial Hall, this too is a former school. This was a Church of England school between 1854 and 1876. Well, given the size of Haxby, it might surprise you to learn that we're actually close to the end of this walk around. Amazing, really. The reason for it is because everything really is clustered in that central section along that one main street. Either side of it, you've got the shops, you've got the businesses, you've got the church, you've got the pubs, all that kind of stuff. And the rest of it is all residential, as we've already seen. So really, there are only two things left that I want to cover. One of them is a park, and the other one is the railway line and the site of Haxby Station. So uh, yeah, let's get to it and finish this one off. The building in your shot now is the former Haxby Working Men's Club. Now open to everyone, it's called the Haxby Sports Bar. Here's that park. This is the former playing field attached to Oaken Grove Primary School, which closed in 2002. 
York City Council then converted part of the school premises into a youth club and retained the school field as a sports field. This is what stands on the school site now, Oaken Grove Community Centre, which was opened by the Duke of York in 2005. It's run by Haxby and Wigginton Youth and Community Association, hosts regular events and also contains the local library. North of Oaken Grove, it's residential once again. Reed Park, seen here, is one of the newest areas of housing in the town. We've now reached Usher Lane. To the north, it runs through Haxby Moor, where a Roman villa was discovered in 1966. Off it is Windmill Way. Haxby once had a windmill according to numerous sources, but it's unclear where it once stood. Usher Lane ends with a small row of shops which includes hairdressers Placebo. It's got it all this place, hasn't it? So all we've got left is Station Road, a long straight walk back to where I parked the car and to the beginning of this route. And of course this will cross the railway line that we saw earlier and will take in the site of Haxby Station. So to finish, let's have some railway history here in York. Station Road takes us past the Ralph Butterfield Primary Academy, a school which caters for around 300 children. Also on Station Road I found the allotments, not the biggest we've ever seen but they'll keep the fans happy for another day. Just beyond those is a jet petrol station and beyond that you'll find the site of Haxby's currently disused railway station. I say currently because even though the town hasn't had a station since 1930, it could soon be reconnected to the rail network. This, Haxby's original station which opened in 1845, once saw 15 trains each way between York and Flaxton daily. Increasing competition from bus services meant eventually it closed, but all that could be about to change, apparently. Since the 1980s, the idea of a new station here has been discussed as a potential way to reduce traffic in York City Centre. However, there have been disagreements about the new station's location. The latest noises suggest one will be built in 2024. Who knows, by the time this video goes out, that may have changed. Once over the crossing, we're almost back to the start. Here's Landing Lane again, this time the entrance to it from Tothorpe Road. That's been a thoroughly fascinating walk around. And we're back to the beginning. This is West Nook, which I uh, chose to park on this morning. And the river basically runs around the back of this street. The path I used to get to the river to begin this episode is literally just there. Oh look, my car is parked right next to it. There you go, that's been the town of Haxby. And that leaves us with just two more to go to in York. To finish with, we're driving out of Haxby by using Tothorpe Road, which skirts the edge of Haxby Moor. This leads to the hamlet of Tothorpe, which is where the penultimate parish of York will begin. Get ready for some more railway history and some military involvement next week. I'll see you there soon. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.